Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 31 of the chapter Thermodynamics. Since we have not done chemical equilibrium as yet and we have related Gibbs free energy to chemical equilibrium, it is important that I do these three solved examples of your NCRT textbook exercise to make it clear how do we use the knowledge of Gibbs free energy and use it to find out the equilibrium constant or relate it to the equilibrium. The first question here that I'll be dealing with is question 6.11, that is 6.11. It is the solved example of your NCRT text, but I'd like to explain it to you. In this question, it says that you have to calculate delta G for conversion of oxygen to ozone. So delta G is the free energy change, Gibbs free energy change and R and standard. It means it is the standard free energy change for the reaction, for this reaction for the conversion of oxygen to ozone and the equation given is 3 by 2 O2 in the gaseous state that is in its standard state gives you O3 gas at 298 Kelvin these are the standard conditions 298 Kelvin and substances in their standard states or in their most stable form if Kp for this conversion is 2.47 into 10 to the power minus 29 then and R is given to you, you have to find out the value of delta RG. Now, let me just remind you what equilibrium constant K is. I told you equilibrium constant for any reaction, that is A plus B, that gives you C plus D in a chemical reaction, where there is chemical equilibrium. The equilibrium constant in terms of concentration, Kc we call it, would be the concentrations of the products, the product of the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants right so whatever number of moles of c you have number of moles of d you have divided by the number of moles of uh, a and b let's say in the equation you have a stoichiometric coefficient like a two so then this would become a square of this right so you raise the value to the power of the stoichiometric coefficient when you're finding Kc. And here we have equilibrium constant in terms of pressure. What does it mean? It means the partial pressure of C multiplied by partial pressure here Kp would be equal to partial pressure of C multiplied by partial pressure of D divided by the partial pressure of A to the power 2 into the partial pressure of B. So it is the same thing, only it is in terms of pressure. Equilibrium constant in terms of pressure, equilibrium constant in terms of concentration. Since we've not done the chapter equilibrium as yet, I think it is important just to tell you what these are. And then we are going to apply the equation and use what I told you in the previous um, video about um, free energy and relating it to equilibrium constant. So our question is that we have to calculate delta G. And what is the equation that we have? We have the delta Rg negative, that is the equilibrium, uh, sorry, the free energy, standard free energy change for a reaction is equal to minus 2.303 Rt log of K. And K given here could be Kp, it could be Kc. Since we've been given Kp, we'll write Kp. If it was natural log, 2.303 would not be there. Delta Rg negative would be equal to Rt ln Kp minus Rt ln Kp. But since we want it in the uh, log to the base 10, we multiply it by 2.303. So this is the equation we have. We've been given the value of R, right? T is 298 Kelvin. And uh, Kp is given, we are supposed to calculate delta Rg. It's a simple numerical problem. So delta Rg negative would be equal to minus 2.303 into R is 8.314 joule per Kelvin per mole into what is T? 298 Kelvin. So do you see the Kelvin inverse and Kelvin here? They get cancelled into log of 2.47 into 10 to the power minus 29. Now, when you solve this and find out the log and you calculate all of it, the value that you get would be equal to 163000 
1630000 and joules per mole right the units that you are left with are joules per mole or you could say this is equal to 163.0 kilojoules per mole right so this was the first numerical what have you done you just applied the formula and you calculated delta g all other values were given to you this was a very simple problem let us now move to the next problem the question is that you have to find out the value of equilibrium constant now you're supposed to find out k you have to find out the value of equilibrium constant for the following reaction at 298 kelvin the temperature given is t is 298 kelvin we know the value of r is this already so delta because that's a constant the gas constant and delta rg of the at the given temperature is also given so let's solve this we know that delta rg negative is equal to minus 2.303 rt log k right and we are expected to find out log k we are what are we asked for? We are asked for k. So we, if we first find out log k from this equation and then we find the anti-log of whatever that value is, it will give us the value of k. So we'll say, what will log k be then? Log k would then be equal to, we'll take everything else, even the negative sign this side. So it would be equal to minus delta rg negative divided by 2.303 r right and what is the value let's substitute the values delta rg is given to us it is minus minus and minus see minus of minus 13.6 kilojoules we turn it into joules because rest everything we have it in joules r is in the value of joules per kelvin per mole so this will be minus 13.6 into 10 to the power 3 joules per mole divided by 2.303 what's the value of r 8.314 joules per kelvin per mole right into the temperature is 298 kelvin so let's cancel out the units per kelvin and kelvin get cancelled per mole per mole get cancelled joule and joule get cancelled and therefore there would be no units for the value of uh, the log k that you would obtain and it makes sense because log k as i told you k is only a ratio of either the concentrations or the uh, pressures the partial pressures so whatever is the unit in the numerator would be the unit in the denominator too so it will be cancelled out anyway so now this would be equal to when you calculate this this minus and minus would become plus and when you calculate this what will be the value of log k that you obtain log k would be equal to 2.38 positive 2.38 now if you find out the anti-log of this of 2.38 would be equal to k so what is if you find out the antilog of 2.38 it will turn out to be 2.4 into 10 to the power 2 2.4 into 10 to the power 2 would be the antilog of this log k and the antilog of log k would be k so this is how you will calculate the value of k again a simple substitution you only used the formula delta rg is equal to minus 2.303 rt log k now there is one more solved example which is which has one more step involved in it so let's do that and with that i will finish this video give me a minute so moving on to the last question that i'll be discussing today <clears throat> this is question 6.13 at 60 degrees celsius dinitrogen tetroxide that is n2o4 is 50 percent dissociated calculate the standard free energy change at this temperature and at one atmosphere very little information given but actually the information that you require it has all of it 
When it says one atmosphere, it is telling you the total pressure at that time. So the equation, as you know, when we are going to relate uh, Gibbs energy to equilibrium, it's going to be the only equation we have is that delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S, which is equal to minus RT ln K or minus 2.303 RT log of K. Now, using that, the information that we have is the temperature is 60 degrees Celsius. First of all, temperature 60 degrees Celsius has to be converted to plus 273 would be equal to 333 Kelvin, right? Convert the temperature. All temperatures, whenever we do, we always choose to uh, have the temperature in Kelvin. And N2O4 is 50% dissociated and you have to calculate the standard free energy change. So we'll write the equation first. <coughs> N2O4, excuse me. <coughs> N2O4 gas <coughs> would give you NO2 gas, twice NO2. And the temperature is given to us. And it is 50% dissociated, all right? And the pressure, the total pressure given to us is one atmosphere. When we did states of matter, if you remember, we calculated the partial pressures. Now, we are, what am I looking for? I'm looking for K. And in order to find out K, I must have some information about the concentrations or the pressures. He's given me a hint here that the total pressure is one atmosphere. So I would like to use pressures. What is partial pressure? How do you calculate the partial pressure of a gas? Partial pressure is equal to, let us say there, there's a gas A. Partial pressure of A would be equal to the mole fraction of A into P total. If you remember, this is what we have done in states of matter, in the gaseous state. So the partial pressures we would like to calculate first. What is P total? P total is one atmosphere. And if we find out the mole fractions of both of these gases, then it is possible for us to find out the partial pressures and then use it in the formula to find out, uh, to put the value in K so that from that we can find out the value of delta Rg negative. So how do we do this? Let us first find out the mole fraction. So mole fraction of N2O4. We are finding out the mole fraction of N2O4. It would be equal to what is mole fraction? It is the number of moles of that substance divided by the total number of moles. Now, what is the number of moles? Let us just see. 50% of N2O4 is dissociated. So if 50% of N2O4 is dissociated, we, let us assume we had one mole. We are left with 0.5 moles at equilibrium. Right? 50% of it has dissociated. If 50% of this has dissociated, we know according to the Moyer equation, if you have one mole of N2O4 at equilibrium, you'd have two moles of NO2. You'll have two moles of NO2. So if you have 0.5 moles of N2O4 at equilibrium, NO2 would be twice this amount because it is twice. One mole is to two moles. So what will be the concentration of NO2? It would be one mole. Right? So, if 50% has dissociated, we are now left with 0.5 is the concentration here and one mole. So, let's find out the mole fraction. Mole fraction would be of N2O4. How much is left? 0.5. So, at equilibrium, the concentration of uh, N2O4 is 0.5 divided by what is the, uh, the total, the sum of the concentrations of the reactant and product or both the gases. It would be 1 plus 0.5. 1 plus 0.5 would be 1.5. And what is the mole fraction of NO2 then? NO2, the concentration is 1 upon what is the total concentration? 1.5. Now we have the mole fractions of both. So we can find out the partial pressures of both. So the partial pressure of N2O4 would be equal to the mole fraction, that is 0 0.5, upon 1.5 into the total pressure is 1 atmosphere. And what is the partial pressure of partial pressure of the other gases NO2? So we're calculating the partial pressure of N2O4 is 0 0.5 upon 1.5, that is mole fraction into total pressure. And partial pressure of this would be mole fraction of this, that is 1 upon 1.5 into the total pressure. P total is how much? 1 atmosphere. 
right? So, Kp is equal to the partial pressure of NO2 square because the stoichiometric coefficient is 2 and divided by the partial pressure of N2O4, that is the reactant. So this would be 1 upon 1.5 square into, you are dividing this, so the numerator and denominator will get flipped. So this would be 1.5 upon 0 0.5 and 1 atmosphere and 1 atmosphere in both the cases is the same. So when you calculate this, you calculate the partial pressure and it turns out to be 1.33 is the value of Kp. Now we are supposed to find out delta Rg negative is equal to minus 2.303 Rt log Kp. So, which should be equal to minus 2.303, the value of R is 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole. What's the temperature? It is 333 Kelvin into, what's the value of Kp? 1.33, right? So, free energy, the Kelvin and Kelvin would get cancelled, you would get it in joules per mole, would be equal to minus 763.8 kilojoules per mole. That is, uh, you actually must have got 763800 joules per mole and you just converted it into kilojoules to make it smaller. So, this was how you would use your knowledge and how you would relate free energy to equilibrium. With that, I come to an end to this video. In the next video, I'm going to solve a few more numerical problems based on this chapter, and then we'll proceed to the next chapter that is chemical equilibrium. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to all your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye for now.